and welcome to the How Not to Screw Up Your Kids podcast, the bucket emptying episodes. I'm your host, Dr. Mary Han, psychologist and parenting expert. And in today's episode, I want to tackle the really difficult question. And I'm, I say this as a difficult question because there genuinely, unfortunately, is no clear cut answer. But the difficult question is parents, where's the fine line being in, between encouraging our children to really dig deep and work hard at something that they're clearly talented and want to pursue and where we overstep that mark and we're being the pushy parent that actually it really isn't the best idea to be. And this really came off the back of having watched the film, I think it's called Sir William, which looks at Venus and Serena Williams' father and how he was really instrumental in their rise to the global tennis champions that they are. And it really kind of made me think about what, how do we know as parents where that fine line is? And I'm really sorry to say there is no sort of distinct definitive answer. I genuinely felt that what having watched, and then obviously you'd expect me, I went and read a bit more around it, is that certainly from the video footage that was taken, the real video footage of the, not the film, but the video footage of the girls, Serena and Venus, when they were younger, it was really clear from the responses that they gave that they were very passionate about pursuing their tennis career. And I think in that sort of situation where you've got a child who's really articulate, is really clear that they have a passion for whether it's musician, whether it's theatre, whether it's a sport, whether it's a particular academic pursuit, when they really articulate it in lots of ways, it's quite straightforward you know, we can then really step up and hold them to account. I think sometimes where the grey area comes in, which is I'm often asked, is where we see as parents that our children have an aptitude. They have a skill, they have a particular ability, they do particularly well at something, but our children don't actively seek, they don't want to necessarily pursue that. So let me just give you a couple of kind of things that might be able to help you make that decision as to whether you're a little bit more forceful in encouraging them or whether you take that step back. The first thing that I would say is that it absolutely 100%, you do not push if your child has not articulated that that is an area that they actively want to pursue beyond the sheer joy. And that can be really difficult for us as parents to accept because there are some, we'll have children who are incredibly gifted in specific aspects, whether that's creatively, um, whether that and creative can be all sorts, can be musical, can be um, creative in terms of problem solving and um, can be creative in terms of drama and theatre, can be creative in terms of what we might typically think artistically or creative in terms of cooking, all sorts of things. So or our children may well be particularly gifted in a, in a sort of athletic prowess. If our children can be gifted in that area, but if they don't actively want to pursue it as something that becomes either a career or something that they really want to hit the top with, there are some children who just simply are really get a lot of joy out of something that they are incredibly gifted in, but they do not want to take it any further. And the reason for that, um, which I've learned direct from the horse's mouth, this is what they've told you know a lot of the teens and children that I've worked with who have been particularly gifted in certain areas, have said that that gift in lots of ways has been their outlet um, and instead if if that outlet is taken away and suddenly becomes something that they take as an A-level or something they do at university it loses that way of just being something that they use to decompress so that's the first marker that we need to be aware of is it being driven by my child who wants to do it more than it's simply being a bucket emptying activity um, and joy they want to pursue that so if they don't and they're just simply seeing it for the joy then we uh, then it's about allowing them to do that and not pushing them in any other way so that's the first thing I would say um, in terms of us sort of looking at this particular decision the second thing is I think we need to be honest and take a bit of a step back and just ask ourselves am I slightly living vicariously has my child got a talent for something that they have a particular gift in as well. And it's something that I had a talent and a gift in and that I really regret my parents not forcing me, not pushing me, not encouraging me because I could have been instead. 
And this is where we have to be really mindful because we end up then living vicariously through our children and try with that. We don't do it consciously, but we end up almost trying to live our dream out through our children. And that really isn't a helpful thing. Conversely, you might have a child who has a particular gift or talent, or maybe they don't even have a gift or a talent, but they really enjoy something and they would love to excel at it, really want to excel at it. And they don't yet demonstrate a very clear aptitude. They don't yet demonstrate a clear gift. If that is coming from your child and that's something that they really, really want to do and they would like us to help them, then that's that's part of our responsibility as parents. Our children have told us that this is something that they want to do. So yes, we can then be a bit more forthright, but it needs to be a collaborative forthright in that, you know, how are you going to acquire, you know, the, the thing that you want to do requires what skills? What are the skills you currently have? What are the skills that we now need to work on in terms of helping you get to that next level? And then problem solving it with your children. Because the last thing we want to be doing is stepping in the way and telling our children, particularly if it's their dream, their aspiration, then it should be about them owning it. We can help problem solve. We can help pose questions, but it should be their dream as such to live out. And then the final thing that I would say is you might have a child who has a gift or no gift, they want to pursue something, but you're noticing that they're they're kind of taking a step back, they're withdrawing, they're not doing it. In these cases, it's difficult at this stage to be clear whether it is something we push or we don't push, because the reason why they're not pursuing it is to do, is to do with a lack of confidence. So let me just kind of go over that again, just so that you can understand. So this could be a child who wants to be able to pursue something, but it's the thing that's actually holding them back is a lack of confidence and a lack of self-belief. If that's the case, then actually, and even if you're not entirely sure, but you've got a child who's really talented at something, but they, you, you're noticing that they're just not taking opportunities when they come around. They're not really putting themselves in that in that situation but they talk about being really passionate about it. Then this could simply be, and I think this is what you need to sort of really sort of focus on and work on first, is it could be that they're lacking confidence and self-esteem. There could be a bit of a narrative going on in their head that sort of says, well, who am I? I'm, you know, I'm not the sort of person that it will be successful at this. Their belief isn't there. So what you need to really focus in in that scenario is not about pushing them into the aspect that they want to be in but really what strip it right back and work on the building blocks about about their actual confidence their self-belief in who they are as a person broadly not very specific to that quite often what happens as parents is let's say we've got a child who um i don't know they want to be a football they want to be a footballer and what tends to happen is when we see that they don't speak to the coach about wanting to be included in the games or they don't actively want to be in uh, football leagues beyond the football that they do at school we assume that what we just need to do is to build their confidence is to get them to do more of the football but actually that's something that will come with time but if there's a fundamental lack of belief in who they are and what they're capable of remember growth mindset it's all about practice the more I do something the better able I am going to to be at it you've got to actually work with the fundamentals of that self-belief and that understanding about growth and development and opportunity and resilience and bouncing back broadly because if you don't deal with it broadly and you only deal with it specifically in that situation it doesn't have the same effect it's much more impactful if you par it right back and really work on building their confidence and we have got an episode so do go and find that so you really want to par it right back if you've parred it back and you've really worked on your child's confidence and so that self remember confidence is not being loud extroverted it's not about being boastful it's about fundamentally knowing yourself to thy own self be true you know who you are you know your strengths you know your areas of development and you believe that you are good enough to be anything you choose to be once you've got that if you're then finding that your child is not wanting to put themselves forward for things it may well be that what they're actually doing is it goes back to that first point of is that do you know what what they're doing is something that is actually joyful is something that they just want to do for the sheer joy of it and they don't necessarily want to actively pursue the next level so I hope that that's helpful because I know it's a really difficult question so often 
You know, I've talked quite honestly when I've done, you know, done parenting talks about how difficult it is. You know, my son was, you know, built like an athlete um, and yet was never interested. And I was really sporty. His father was really sporty. We were massively competitive in school and he showed absolutely no interest. And it was so hard as a parent because you're thinking, oh, my God, you could just be incredible if you just applied yourself. But it wasn't his thing. His thing was elsewhere. He showed no interest, no pursuit of that. So that would have been 100% vicarious living through him and not allowing him to be his true self. So I know how difficult it can be. But I think fundamentally, if we provide those that that lovely nurturing foundation, if we help our children and our teens understand themselves and build that confidence, then we kind of they've, they've got the foundations and the bedrock to then be able to go and do the things that they want to do. So I hope that that's helpful. Um, As ever, if you have enjoyed this podcast episode, I would be eternally grateful, eternally grateful if you could follow, rate and review this podcast so that others can find us and we can spread the love. So until next time.